Welcome back to the Smuggler's Den, episode 24. I'm your host, Tiny Grimes. As always, I'd like to thank SWDestiny.com for their generous hosting of the Smuggler's Den. Go there for all kinds of amazing Star Wars Destiny content. Uh, I'd like to thank Broken Egg Games for... Uh, you can go there, you can buy your product, you put TG Games in when you check out. Maybe help out the show a little bit. Uh, and you can always go to Patreon, Tiny Grimes. We're talking Spirit of Rebellion... Talking pack pulls, decks, all kinds of stuff. And I'd like to welcome in my guest today from Minnesota, the man, the myth, and the legend himself. It's Mike. What's happening, Mike? Hey, I'm exhausted. How are you doing? I'm less exhausted than you because I didn't play uh, a, a World's Flight 1 yesterday. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that your exhaustion is a good exhaustion and that you're moving on to, to day two. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear, representing SoCal. Nice work, oh, my yeah. friend. Oh, yeah. Ne next year, we've, we've, we've got to get the whole SoCal crew out here because, man, that'd be a blast. We were talking about that last night. Actually, it was me, John, Rob, Andy, Al, Jeff, everyone. Fadi it was like, yes, we're all going next year. We may be rolling yeah. like 14 deep next year. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, that that would be pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Mike, give me the highlights. Uh, how how did they start? If I if I am correct here, you started with a loss. I did. Yeah, I, I lost my first game. Um, it's it, it's funny. It's like the only game that I like really remember what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, the way it went down is that um, I was playing against a Django Bala Trooper deck, um, and I'm uh, playing Phasma Bala Trooper. Mm -hmm. And turn three rolls around, and I, I don't draw into any mitigation. I'm like, well, this could potentially be bad, because yeah. he turned one uh, jetpack onto Django and then got a couple uh, DH teams on his Bala Teak. Oh, boy. Um, and then rolls, uh, Bala Teak rolls plus two, plus two, plus two. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, this is not going to turn out well. Um, <laughs> so At I'm, this point... Are you thinking, maybe I just don't activate so that whatever... Wait, did you say you had no removal in hand? I had no removal in my okay. hand, and uh, my, my, my trooper was dead. <laughs> oh, so you're just screwed at this point, unless your Pretty opponent much. rolls really poorly. Yeah, exactly. So so his, his first roll was like plus two, plus two, plus two, and then um, no wow. no base damage. So I was, yep. I was happy with that. Um, and then I'm just like, well, I, I guess I have to just like roll my characters and you know cross my fingers that he doesn't roll damage. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I roll my dudes, and um, I get, like, a, a little bit of damage. Sure. Um, and then he rolls Django in, um, doesn't get any damage, gets, like, a plus resource, resource Ooh. shield or something like that. But he has, uh, what, five cards left in hand? Uh, yep, five cards. Um, Seems and he like he might roll damage. <laughs> he re-rolls all the way down to the last card until he hits it. Wow! And, and ends up with, I think... 12 damage to deal 2 to Bala and then kill Phasma. Mm. Uh, reactivates Bala and then, you know, deals another 6 damage with Bala to kill my Bala. Wow. So, <laughs> this was turn 3? 18, 18 damage in one turn, turn 3. So that was a that, that was a fun time. I, I knew that at least one of my losses would be like a you know dice blowout. So I was I was happy to get it out of the way early. Um, and it, it, he, was, he was a great guy. Um, and it, it, it was still a, a you know, a fun, fun game. Regardless, and it was really funny to watch, like the the dice roll as it happened. But um, yeah, I was, I was a bit nervous coming off that loss for sure. So let's talk about the psychology there, because a lot of people would have that game one, and that would kind of derail their day, right? It'd be like, all right, now I'm on one. My back's against the wall. I pretty much have to win out here, um, and I got screwed by dice. Destiny's a stupid game. I hate it. I hate my life. I hate this world. Why did I fly to Minnesota? Yeah. What was your reaction? I mean, like, when you play a dice game, like, you kind of have to know what you're getting yourself into. And I, you know, I, I signed up for the potential to, you know, be blown out by dice, and I was. Um, and it, like, I, I, I was, you know, I, as stoked for him as he was. I mean, obviously, I didn't, you know, like, want to take a loss, of course, but, like, it was pretty funny to see that roll, and I was just like, I mean, like, like regardless, I'm having fun, so it's like, right, but to me. See, that's such a healthy attitude, because I would not have had that attitude. <laughs> I just would not. I, I've reached, I reached a, a, a point, 
like I used to have that attitude with Destiny, but it's like mm-hmm. enough horrible things that have happened that all of my ability to shrug off Destiny is gone now. Um, I almost feel like I need a month off Destiny so that people can God roll me and I can be like, dude, awesome roll. Instead, right now, I'm like, I'm going to murder you in your sleep because you rolled like that. Yeah, it's it's easy to get to that point for sure. But um, yeah. (laughs) Well, congratulations on holding it together after losing round one, right? Thank you. Thank you. You you didn't uh, go jump into a lake in Minnesota. You got your poise together. Uh, were you worried for the rest of the day, though? Oh, yeah, okay. for sure. I mean, I was like, uh, it, it it was basically like, you know, win your games or, or you're not making day two. Um, yeah, because if you had so, lost another one early, even if you win the rest, your strength, strength of schedule is so low, I don't think you make it. So you have um, to win, like, games two and three, I think. Yeah, I, I think you have to win at least game two, probably. Um, yeah. And then... Like game three, you could probably lose, and then as long as you win games four and game five, um, I did. There are a, a couple people that I, that I know that that happened to. Okay. Um, but for for me, um, then I after I lost that one, I went on to win the next uh, four, and then lost the final game. Um, and that, that that was a bit of a uh, dice loss as well. Um, but more 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 my fault than my my opponent's fault. Like I think I rolled a total of of eight damage in that in that game. And how many turns? Uh, like four or five, maybe. What were you playing against? Uh, the four character rainbow deck. You lost to the four character rainbow deck. I did. Mike. I did. Mike, I say it's not so. One of them made it, the cut. Yeah, oh. well, I, I think two made the cut actually. Oh, maybe, maybe. No. Yeah, I um, I I <laughs> I didn't kill Night Sister until like, like the beginning of turn three or something. And that, that was the only character that I killed. It was so sad. It's kind of troubling. It's kind of trouble. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard to win through that, but I will say this: I feel like the four character deck can be okay against uh, Bala Trooper uh, Phasma, just because it, Phasma doesn't cheat quite as much. And if you can't cheat, mm-hmm. it does have a lot of ways to mitigate. And if it gets lucky with the Night Sister mitigation, um, then it can do really well. But if Bala goes crazy, then it just dies. Right. I mean, it, 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 it. That's exactly it. Like, it has um, a, a ton of mitigation, um, and if it, if it draws it and it can control you, like, I've I've learned to respect its control for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, especially the, the the deflects in there. That's why I you know always kill the nice sister first. But sure. um, it's <laughs> it's it, it's hard to do. You know, when you have to wait until turn three to do it. So yeah, for sure. I, I think the deck that really beats that is Django Bala Trooper because then. It's cheating out its damage, and it can't mitigate, and then and then Ball is standing back up, and then terrible things happen to it. Yeah. All right, so you're in. You're four and two. You made the cut. Uh, mm-hmm. You excited? You ready for day two? I'm stoked. Um, yeah, I'm 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 excited. Have ready to have fun. You gonna switch your deck? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not gonna get disqualified. <laughs> That's probably a, smart move. <laughs> probably a smart move, actually. Probably a smart move. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so uh, let's go here. What were the decks you saw uh, the most in your flight? Not necessarily that you played, but just sort of looking around. What decks seemed to be the most represented? Um, let's, let's see. So um, I, I actually played against uh, five, no, six different decks, which was awesome. Um, wow. But the meta is I, so diverse. It's so it's a, interesting. It's incredible. Yeah, What's amazing. crazy, Mike? I hate the, I hmm? hated the Awakenings meta at the end. I thought it was a terrible meta, but it sure was diverse. Yes, it was like sure. a luck based meta that had tons of decent luck based decks. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's been a lot of um, I, that I've seen a lot of Jango Ball Trooper, uh, a lot of Vader okay. Raider. And when I say a lot, it's like maybe fifteen percent of the, of the yeah, field, sure. like twenty percent max. Like, uh, there's still a ton of diversity. Uh, are you seeing a lot are, of Han Ray and Poe Ray? Um, less uh, of each of those, I would say. Uh, hmm. Less Han Ray than I expected for sure. Um, although there are at least two Han Rays in the, uh, in, you know, that that made the cut yesterday. Yeah, uh, not surprising. And at least one Poe Ray who. Um, is uh, John Magnuson, who wrote all of the uh, State of the World's articles. He's undefeated with his Poe Ray. Oh, deck. that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I heard something really dirty yesterday that kind of bugged me. I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Um, yeah, a friend it. of mine was talking to a friend of his who was at Worlds. He's in line to register his decks, and he says, 
Man, I'm seeing a lot of Phasma Bala Trooper in this line. Um, I'm getting out of line, and I'm putting uh, dodges in my deck. In, <laughs> in, in a Han Ray deck. He stuck some dodges in, be, or a mm-hmm. dodge, because he was worried. What do you think of that? Is that Dirty Pool, or is that uh, legit? Not, I don't know. I mean, he, he hadn't turned in his deck yet, right? So. Yep. I don't know. I, I agree. But I agree exactly what you said. It's like it's on that line. You haven't turned it in yet. I mean, but it's it's pretty shady, right? Like I'm gonna get at the back of the line so I can kind of yeah, see what he, people are ready. To see what, yeah, like I mean, if he if he's like looking through the slips of paper to see like what people are turning in, that's shady. But if he's like just you know like overhearing like what people are yeah, saying, I think like, that's all it is. Just maybe overhearing. Not. But it's yeah. like don't be the don't be the guy in the front of the line. I guess is the lesson. Like. They're like, all right, time to register, and everyone's like, no, I'm gonna kind of wait over here. What? Can someone get in line already? Because I want to, <laughs> I want to see what you're registering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of interesting. Um, but this person said he saw almost no Han Ray, uh, but he mm. saw tons of Phasma Bala Trooper. So did you see a lot of Phasma Bala Trooper, or is this guy crazy? I I didn't see a ton of it. I, I the only one that I saw was my own. Mm, uh, interesting. But I mean, like, I, I wasn't, uh, you know, scoping everything out. So. Okay. Um, so what did you see making the cut? I don't know if you saw all of it. Did, you, did Vader Raiders make the cut? Uh, at least one. Uh, D House uh, from the Jedi Trials was playing Vader Raider. He, he made the cut. Um, okay. Rick from Knights of Ren made the cut with a uh, uh, Django Ball Trooper deck. Um, I, I think there, there was at least one other Vader Raider that I saw. Um, and it, it it's mm-hmm. just like, I don't know, it's just so, so many different decks, so many different people. Yeah. Uh, how yeah, about uh, Leia Akbar? Um, I I don't know if any made the cut. I, I don't think so. I okay. I played against a Leia Akbar deck uh, in my second game, um, and beat beat that one. Yeah, that was that list that was kind of that one of the dark horses where if it just hit mm-hmm. six straight uh, range decks, it could probably win four of those games and make the cut. So but yeah, yeah exactly. It, it hits it was... a couple melees and dies. Yeah, I was I was pretty scared to see that on the other side of the table for sure. When I, when I saw, was um, that game two? Did you say? <laughs> yeah, that, that that was game two. Oh it was coming gosh. off of the, you know, that, that game one loss. And I, was, I would have I, tilted right there. Right across from it. I, I would have tilted like, right oh, there. Like, so I just got dice screwed, and now I got my worst <laughs> matchup. What is the world coming to? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To Luckily, um, yeah, I was able to to kill Leia on like tur- you know the, the end of turn two or three. Actually, you want know something funny? Um, so I I have one probe in my deck, and uh, three games in a row, I probed out my opponent's defensive position, and in Ooh. this in this case, it was two defensive positions, and I won off it every single game. <laughs> probe is <laughs> so good. Oh my! God. It was nuts. <laughs> I'm glad you put a probe in there. It was really yeah. pushing on you to try to find a spot for one. I think John was also. It's just such a good. Yeah, game. and it, man, it's. I mean, that that won three out of you know my four games. Yeah, that's crazy. And what's really cool is if any of your opponents happen to hear this. They'll be playing around your one probe. <laughs> my one probe, I know. Awesome. Play around my one probe, man. Play around it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I have it every time. I just told yep. you. I have it every time. Yep, yep exactly. Uh, all right, I want to ask you a question then about this. I, uh, I didn't know how many people were going to be at this. I assumed it was going to be about a 400-person event. I know for Netrunner they've had really, really big events. Were you surprised to see that each flight was only 96 people? Um. Not necessarily. I don't know. I, I haven't been to work before, so I didn't really know what to expect. Sure. Um, and, I mean, to me, that seems like a lot of people, but that's only because, I had, you know, like the biggest tournament that I've played in so far has been like, I don't know, ones that we've been to that are like 18 people or something like that. <laughs> it's well, slightly bigger. Yes, I agree yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So it's like this is still bigger than, you know, any de- – at least Destiny tournament that I've been to. I've been to like Magic Grand Prix that are you know way yeah. bigger, but now Magic's a bigger game, so. Sure. I don't know. It just to me, it seems really problematic when it's that small, and not mm-hmm. because they didn't have people that you know they they were lacking for people that wanted to play. Tons right, right. of people were told they couldn't play because the tickets were gone. Uh, that yeah. that to me is uh, real upsetting. Um, Absolutely, not happy about that. Yeah, I, I I think well, I hope that you know next year and in in years to come they'll. They'll make you know kind of a more merit-based uh, ticketing yeah. system. Yeah. Um, I, I think that would that would be really good for the game. 
Um, but like the, the the room was still packed. Um, like you know, every card table was was full, and then they have two rooms, and they had uh, Armada going on in the second room. So it's like if they had more people, I don't even know where they would fit anyway. It's like they they almost need to to have it off off site or or just yeah. have the entire center just for just for Destiny, which would, which would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I just I feel like it comes back over and over to the same issue that it's like they don't recognize this is a CCG. Right. right. Like a CCG is different. You you have to make it big. Like the the first prize can't be a Mon Mothma poster with terrible <laughs> art. Right. Yeah. You can't restrict your quote world championship to the the first one hundred and ninety random people to click a button. Yeah. Like yeah. everything they've done is wrong. <laughs> but but yeah. coming away from that, if everything they did was wrong setting it up, how has it been there? Have you felt like this has been a great time and it was well worth going? It's been a it's been amazing. Yeah, I've I've had a blast. Um, I mean, it's it's been cool to to hang out with everyone, meet everybody, and play. Um, the the tournament was was run uh, very well, and you know there weren't any hiccups through through that experience. Um, so I, I think it's just a matter of them like kind of realizing what they have on their hands and how to you know they 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 kind of need to handle it different than their other games if it's going to be big. Yeah, I think. I think they've been surprised all along by everything, right? Like, yep. <laughs> okay, we didn't have enough product. We weren't quite expecting that. We weren't quite expecting this many people to want to go to Worlds. Although, I don't understand why, right? Like, the game was right. huge. They've uh-huh. had bigger terms for Netrunner. But, yeah, I feel like that is the big thing, is to recognize what they have on their hands and cultivate it, right? Not, uh, yeah. not stifle it, cultivate it. Right, and I, I think for, for this first one, like, other than adding more slots... I- I don't know exactly what they could do to, you know, make it more merit based because, you know, there haven't really been anything, um, like to, to base it on. Um, but in the future, you know, after have to have store champs and like regionals and stuff like that. Like, I, I think it would be cool if, like, you know, regional winners store like regional top fours, like store champ winners or top fours, um, like pe- people like that would get priority in, in registration. Like, yeah. at least you know that that those people are, you know, like, you know, serious about Destiny and that that's why they're going. I would love that. Store champ winners, regional top four, all those people yeah. get automatic invites if they want it. Yep. I think that would be really good for the game. Yeah. And then Worlds is, is a pile of the very best players rather than a bunch of Minnesota locals and <laughs> other people that click the button. People who click the button. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like that just seems like, really weird to me. As as someone who you know who who was one of those those button clickers, um, I, I I would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in an especially hard spot. Like in the middle of teaching at a major university, it's very challenging to be like, guys, I know <laughs> this is only a fifty minute lecture, but do you mind if I take about twelve minutes to click some buttons? <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay, cool. Yeah, sweet. And, and it's funny because some people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I had the exact same spot. So what I did is I designed a special lesson plan around that. <laughs> I mean, just good for you. I'm happy you were able to do that, but I don't know. To me, that's a bit much. Put a, just, just just make sure you, you you put on a movie for them next yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. All right, I got a really good film here. It's uh, what what I bring today? Star Wars. Let's watch that. <laughs> Spinning. Perfect. Oh man. So what's been your favorite part of Worlds? Let me well, actually let me back up for a second. When okay. I, what I remember most about Worlds is the kitchen. That they have like this awesome <laughs> restaurant that actually serves good food right within the center. That was the most shocking thing to me about Worlds. What's been the most happily surprising thing for you? Ooh, um, their yeah, their game center is awesome. Man, I wish we had a place like that around you know in SoCal. Like, they, like the, the the cafe and they, they serve beer too, which is awesome. And then yeah. you know they've got all 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 the games that you could ask for. You know, like like a whole wall filled with games that you can just like pull down and play. Um, it's just an, like such a cool event space. Yeah. Uh, secret pro tip, Mike, if you can figure out who your opponent is for the next round ahead of time, buy him a buy beer a or two before the game. You know? <laughs> be friendly. Yeah. <laughs> just, just be a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone will be like that. Mike, nicest guy ever. I don't know how I got so drunk, but we had a great time. <laughs> it was a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I, you know, just the the people have been awesome. It's been it's been cool to you know hang out with other people that you know love the same thing that I do. Yeah, that's uh, that that was one of my big tips going in. Right, is just talk to people. Yeah. Everyone is a fan of this game and have a great time. 
Yeah, for uh, sure. Give me a prediction based on what you've been seeing, based on how you did. How do you think you're going to do day two, and what deck do you think is now going to win? Um, I think the winner is either going going to be John uh, with his po, with his uh, po Ray deck, or Whoa. his buddy Andrew with his Han Ray deck. Whoa! Um, okay. They're 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 both undefeated, um, and uh, Andrew's Han Ray deck is uh, apparently like nuts. Um, I don't, I don't 100 percent know know what, what's in it yet, but I'm I'm excited to see the deck list after this is all over. Um, but I I think that they're you know good contenders for this. But I, I don't know how many more games I need to win to make it to like top 32 tomorrow or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I probably, probably have to two. win two, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I'm I'm hopeful, but I'm not like you know counting on it for sure. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. Um, <laughs> that's really interesting that you'd say. I can't wait to see what's in his Han Ray deck. Mike, I can tell you like 26 cards that are in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I probably could too, but it's like there, there's there, there's some, some secret sauce in there. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm stoked to see what it is. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what secret sauce is left. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like we've stirred all the sauce around, Mike, and there's no more <laughs> secrets. It's just a matter of what do you choose to be the card you put in there. Yeah. That would be awesome, though, if he's like, yeah. I'm running this card, and you're like, "What? I never, like, I don't even remember that card." Is in the set. What are you talking yeah. about? That's that's kind of what everybody, uh, you know, said when uh, when Enigma won um, the TTS league. I mean, he he, he had street informants in there. It's like street informants. That's yeah. a card. Yep, <laughs> definitely. And so. even the the moving damage card that I can never remember the name of because I hate uh, that card. Yeah, so much. draw attention. Draw yeah. attention. Yeah, I mean the, the I card even, this. I didn't says, play that in the uh, starter set. Suicide Han. <laughs> I get that. I draw that in the starter set and be like, "That's a reroll." Yeah, <laughs> I. It's funny. Uh, someone that I that I met yesterday won a game because his opponent uh, draw like played draw attention, moved two damage on the Han, and then he rolled into eight damage to kill yeah, Han. Like, that's why I hate that card. <laughs> I really yep. am not a fan of that card. <laughs> like eighty percent of the time, that, that's what happens. Yeah, I mean it can be useful, but so that funny. Can happen. That can yep. definitely happen. <laughs> Uh, well, Mike, I had an amazing time yesterday. Yeah, man. So I, I I heard a new set came out. A new set did come out. I know you're. I know for you it didn't. You're just like, <laughs> nope, no new set. But Mike, a new set did come out. I'm telling you, it came out. Whoa. It was glorious. Um, John and I drove around Los Angeles. <clears throat> tro- highways jammed, right? So John is like a savant, and he's like, <laughs> all right, we're gonna take this road to this road, and and we're, like, driving all the side streets of L.A. to grab our boxes. Um, so we got them. We got to our location and uh, opened our boxes and had an awesome time. I will say this, though, Mike. I'm not mm-hmm. going to name names, but there was a store that I went into to pick up one of my boxes. And uh, they had packs for 5 bucks a pop. <laughs> so, that's, like, a 50 per- 60% increase? Something like that? Yeah, that's, I mean. That's a lot. It's interesting because I can see both sides of this, right? From the one, from their perspective, it, it could be two things. It could just simply be, hey, it's called supply and demand, fool, right? Yeah. Like if someone's going to pay this, obviously as a store trying to make money, that's what we're going to charge. That's the way the world works. Um, mm-hmm. And on the other side, maybe it's it's even a nice thing of like, well, if we sell them for five, they won't instantly sell out and we'll be able to say we have them in stock and someone can come in who got screwed out of all their boxes and get two packs. And, yeah, they overpay a little bit, but they don't care. They're just happy to get packs. Um, maybe that's the case. But, Mike, for the consumer, like the regular dude who walks in and is like, hey, you got packs? And they go, yep, five bucks. Uh, <laughs> everybody I talked to at the other store where we ended up was like, I'm never going back to that store. They are greedy bastards. So it's really hard to walk that line of, like, can you get away with marking up? And yeah, you can, but what are the long-term effects? What do you think, Mike? What do you think of a uh, store charging five bucks? I think that's that's probably not the best way to, to grow a community. I mean, you know, I, I, I like capitalism as much as the, the next dude, but that's uh, maybe a, a bit ambitious. Yeah, that, that was my thought as well. I was just kind of like, <laughs> hmm, okay. And I mean, one guy I know was all excited, and he was like, yeah, I was like, I'll take – Three packs, and they're like, "All right, it's fifteen bucks." And he was like, "I'll not take the three packs." <laughs> Never mind. I did not know what I was getting into when I said the words, "I'll take three packs." Yeah, it's like I'll just go to another store and get five packs. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So, 
It was uh, interesting. I ended up with five boxes. I've opened Man, four so nice. far. Uh, I saved one so I could open them with my daughter. We'll probably make a video. You know, we like to have fun doing that kind of stuff. That's good. Um, She'll open all your legendaries. God, I hope <laughs> so because you know how many. Guess how many Palpatines I got. Uh, I'm I'm gonna guess uh, zero. Zero would be correct. Yes. Zero. <laughs> um, guess how many rocket <laughs> launchers I got. Surprising. Uh, hmm. I, I think I'm gonna guess zero. Zero is correct. <laughs> yeah, I got kind of wrecked on the boxes. Uh, the first two boxes were real bad. I got my but... elite Krennic out of them. I got my elite Obi Wan out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, things were looking dire. But then in the last two boxes, I did get four speeds and one force lightning. So nice. Um, I really scooped up most of the cruddy legendaries. I'm set there. Uh, the upper mm -hmm. crust legendaries, not so much. So hopefully gotcha. I can score them all in my last box. And if not, I will be desperately trying to find someone who loves Krennic and Obi Wan and, and <laughs> I, th I think those people exist. What's up? I, I I think those people exist. I do too. I mean, I see people all the time talking about how Krennic is the the best card and it's amazing. And I am glad people think that. I am happy <laughs> to trade you my Krennic. Yep. Uh, but it was a fun night. We uh, we ended up at Game Ogre, and they were amazing. We walk in, they're like, hey, free drinks over here. And we're like, okay, cool. And all night there was free drinks, and then at one, and they were doing a raffle, and every hour they'd give away three packs. Like, That's awesome. That's cool. Of course, Rob scored like a Palpatine or something out of out of them. You know, he's, it's, <laughs> it's Rob, right? That's what happens when Rob <laughs> opens packs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then, but then I, I went up to the guy and I was like, hey, when's the next raffle? Because I didn't know that they were on the hour. It's like, uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're getting kind of hungry. I think we're going to head out for a little bit. And he's like, don't head out. We're going to order pizza. We'll get it right now. And they go oh. get like five high quality pizzas. They run out. They go get five more. Why not? <laughs> That's so great. It was just amazing. And then, yeah. and then we're just hanging out there, right? Opening our stuff. I finally put a deck together. I'm playing with Fadi. In walks. Darth Vader, full costume, <laughs> got the voice going on, taking pictures wow. with everyone. And I'm thinking, dang, this store owner really has his stuff together. And then he's like, I don't know who this guy is. He's just a dude <laughs> who wandered in here. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, it was just one of those <laughs> nights where, you're like, is this real? Like, am yeah. I just dreaming? If I am, do <laughs> not pinch me. I'll just live out this dream. That's so awesome. Yeah, I, I love that shop. That's that's uh, in my, my hometown. Yeah, that and was, uh, they, they that always was do a nice lot stuff. of fun. The owner was amazing. He, he had our boxes, right? So this is the problem. John and I were clever about pre-ordering, and we were like, I'll take two from this store, two from this store, one over here, and pray that just one of them comes in in total. And they all came in, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds great. There, it was funny, though. There was a guy at the shop who was looking at us with those eyes, you know, the eyes of covetousness. And he's <laughs> like, hey, man. Um, he's talking to John. How many how many boxes did you get? And John's like, I got six boxes. He's like, six boxes? How do you have so much money? <laughs> and John was like, I got old. That's how I got so <laughs> much money. And I said... You get more money, but your knees are a lot worse. I can assure you of that. <laughs> so, yep. That was kind of humorous. We had a good time. That's um, not, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like an awesome time. Yeah. But I had okay pulls. I got three batons. I got two nice. four speeds. But, Mike, I will say this. Um, I feel like my deck is broken. Like, it's, like, I know. I know everyone out there is, like, rolling their eyes. Oh, God, here goes Tiny. Broken. And, yes, broken <laughs> usually actually means... The very top of the curve, not necessarily broken. I use broken incorrectly usually, but here I'm serious. I think it's a broken legit deck. broken. Yeah, and the reason <laughs> is, is because it's ammo belt second chance. Yeah, um, and then I made a build deck, and it mills <laughs> like crazy. So your clock is about four to five turns. You have to plow through a second chance ammo belts, rebel, scavenge, all these cards to kill that dang Podme. And if you don't, you lose. So you, you you got like like four or five six turns to get through like sixty HP. <laughs> yep, yep, it's tough. It's real tough, yeah. man. It's real tough. Um, I, am... I had the, the coolest play ever. Uh, I was playing against Fadi's vehicle deck, and I mm -hmm. had 
con artist going, and it was up to it had three already on it, and then Ooh. I had Padme, and so I did stuff. I, somehow I ended up doing seven mil off the top of his deck. Oh right, because I had an Ascension gun also, and Ooh. they weren't they weren't on the right sides, but I had three PO out, and I had Maz's goggles on the two focus. Uh, and I just, I think he ended up claiming, and I was just like, all right, I'll, actually, this might have been against Rob's Palpatine deck. And then I just, yeah, it was, it was against Rob. I milled off seven on one shot, and he was just oh, like, God. I cannot beat you. Like, if you can <laughs> mill off seven off the top of my deck, and all I have is an elite Palpatine, I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you are very dead, sir. You're very dead. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I, have you played it against another mill deck? No, and that I don't look forward to. I, Mike, I gotta say this: the meta I don't want to play is the mill on mill mil meta eight yeah. games out of ten. Yeah, for sure. That I mean, awful. like that to, to me that that seems like the way to beat a deck that you can't kill, right? Like, yes. <laughs> and that's why mill is so good right now because so many decks can run second chance ammo belt. Uh, there's a great yeah. vehicle deck out there that does it. I'm just gonna build. Uh, Poe Maz as a second chance ammo belt deck. I'm just gonna yeah. <laughs> load up Poe with that while he's chucking stuff at their face. Uh, and so, how do you beat that? You just mill him. You yep. just mill him and go, okay, cool. I can't kill your guys. You know what? I grant you that. I can't kill your guys. I will mill them instead. Yeah, I, I think um, if if that you know second chance ammo belt deck deck archetype takes off, which it will because it is uh, <laughs> probably broken because it's um, degenerate. Yep. Yep. Uh, then we we will definitely see a, a mill meta. Yes, I I think that's what we're gonna see. I came to the store with a dark side mill deck and a light side mill deck, hoping to open the cards to make them. The light side mill deck, Mike, it has two legendaries, two Maz's goggles. That's it. Ooh. Nice. And it's like twenty six or twenty four uh, Spirit of Rebellion cards. Wow. It just oh doesn't gosh. need legendaries. You know why, Mike? The legendaries in Spirit of Rebellion aren't that great. They're not that great, Mike. <laughs> you know, that, that, that that's actually potentially a benefit. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Well, you no. don't even need to buy boxes. You just go on Miniature Mart, buy a couple rares, and you're ready. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it, it's exciting. Um, stay tuned to my channel for more about my mill deck. It's one of these things where I'm real excited to share it because it's such a fun, cool deck. But, boy, I don't want to play against yeah. it. I, I kind of want to keep it as a secret <laughs> deck and never show anybody, but no, no, no. I, I, I want late. you to keep playing it so that so that they potentially uh, realize how how silly yes. it is and they they uh, make some changes. That's been my goal is to yeah. to really push it in their face and say, look how broken this is. Every deck I build is with this combo because it's too degenerate. Please, please, for the love of all that is holy, fix <laughs> this dang combo. You are red, <laughs> the the smuggler. The Smuggler, which was broken, but way harder to do. This is the easiest combo yeah. ever. <laughs> Just I, I, I would, like even for theme reasons, I would I would be happy if they if they made ammo belt only affect equipment and weapons. Yeah, because yeah. it like it just makes sense that that's what it should do, right? Yeah. How does it protect abilities? Yeah. Like I'm gonna force choke you. Oh wait, you were you silenced me. I will pull out my ammo belt, which has an unsilencer in it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's, it's just the most versatile ammo belt in the entire world. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if there was some card that they specifically were leaning in, like, mm, man, you pay so much for a mind probe. Do you really want it to go away? No, we should have an ammo belt. I don't know. I don't know what the yeah. theory of that, on that one was. Yeah. Not, not, not totally sure on that one either. My guess, Mike, my honest guess, slipped through the cracks. That's yeah. my honest guess. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yep. We'll see what happens indeed. Um, and Mike, uh, thanks so much for stopping by. And I hope you do really well at Worlds. I am rooting for you. The whole SoCal meta is rooting for you. It was one of the most fun things about being at Game Ogre together. Like, we'd all be opening our packs and then somebody would be like, I got a message from Mike. And we'll all open up our phone. Did Mike message me? He did. He won. Oh, my God. He's still alive. Man, that, that's awesome to hear. It was really fun. That, we were all great. talking about you all night. 
um we were basically like your big time fan club so it was cool <laughs> yeah and i i want to want to give a shout out to to you and john and scott and Fadi uh, and rob and like everyone who helped me you know prepare and test and hang out and play yeah. just play a ton of games it was awesome to- it, it like, helped a ton yeah i was talking about that last night how how much you deserve to do well because you really put in the time you know i mean it was like you were driving all over la to test <laughs> so i'd be like hey man I'm really busy, but if you can come all the way over to my house in the middle of the day and make a, a several hour drive, we can do this. And you were like, I will be there. I was like, damn. Yeah. Okay. That was commitment. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, I'm really excited for you. We all are. And uh, all I can say is this. If you don't make the cut, you're out of the SoCal meta. No. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right, man. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, have a great time today. What are you doing today, by the way? You have any cool stuff lined up? Um, the Knights of Ren um, like cocktail party uh, happy hour thing is is tonight. So I'm gonna ha- head over there, check that out. Um, d- during the day, probably just uh, hang out at the game center, watch uh, some Destiny, scout. Try to, try to- Try to meet some more people. Yeah, um, I hear you. You're going to scout all yeah, the top exactly. tables. I'm, you got our pen and paper. You're like, yep, practice this tonight. Uh-huh, I'm going to uh-huh. take meticulous deck list notes on, on all the top tables for sure. Good news. <laughs> you're going to get deck lists if you make the cut. That, that's right. That's right. All right. Before we go, we're going to talk about that real quick. What do you think of this? Now that you're there, now that you may make the cut, what do you think of this idea of getting a deck list and more importantly, giving a deck list to an opponent uh, when you get to the cut? Um, I I don't know. I I'm not really thrilled about it, right? Like, I I don't. It's it's weird. There there's two sides of it, and it's it's funny because I was thinking about this before. It's like, <laughs> do you put tech cards in your deck so that when people see it, they're playing around it the whole time? Like mm. like you don't necessarily play it in every game, but it's like you, you could kind of like mind game your opponent just by Ooh, like I showing like that. the deck, right? Like, um, it's kind of kind of an interesting like twist on it. Um. But you know, obviously the the surprise factor is is gone. Um, and I mean, I I don't know. It's I, like I, I guess I don't really have a strong opinion either way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it does seem a little a little weird. Yeah, I, I feel like in this meta, it's fine. Like there's no surprises left anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And and for me personally, I love it because I do great with perfect information. That's like when I'm at <laughs> my best. If I can have perfect right. information then I can make every decision based on not what you might have, but what you have, right? I, right. I can I can do a lot better. Um, but I can definitely see the other side of, especially for the person who has a cool deck, right? I don't think that's mm-hmm. going to happen in this meta, but it might in Spirit of Rebellion. It certainly might by set three. Someone might have a really yeah. cool deck that no one saw coming. Um, and at that point, it's kind of frustrating, right? It's like yeah. I spent months cultivating this bit by bit. And working on it. And now it's my surprise deck. Here you go. Here's my surprise deck. Right. That's that's where it becomes frustrating. Yeah. Um, but since you haven't been to Worlds before, I will tell you this. People are douchebags. Like, <laughs> it's just some people are, man. Some people are. And uh, in Game of Thrones, there was a group that came together. And I have no problem before the cut kind of talking like, hey, man, you should watch out for this one card. They are packing it. Be ready for it. Okay, that's cool. But these mm-hmm. guys... They would scout every game they could, write down every card in your deck, and yeah, by the true. time it made the cut, they actually had your list, and they would pass your list around amongst their group, and you would not have theirs. And that is radically unfair. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's that's shady as hell. Yeah, and and that's the problem. Some people are great, some people are shady. And uh, yeah. you know, this kind of eliminates that, right? Now everyone gets to be shady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like one, you know, one one small small sub you know subsection of of the population ruins it for everybody. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I I think I like it, but I totally get people who do not like it, especially if you put the work in to have the awesome super secret deck. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, like I guess the thing is, like, if you have that awesome super secret deck, like by the time you make it up there, like you know, p- people are already talking about it. So yeah, not not a secret anymore. I, I like I guess in that situation, if you're that person, like then it becomes a thing where, like, okay, it's only fair if I know what's in your deck, too. Yeah. And 
And also, with 30 card decks, it's way easier to know most of the cards in the deck. Like, oh, if yeah. you have a friend that played him, they probably saw the whole deck, right? Yeah. Whereas if yeah. it's a 60 card deck, then at least there's more mystery. There's really no mystery in these decks. They're so small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it's also a thing, too, um, like, because the game doesn't have, like, sideboarding, um, like, you you know, you, you can't pack any surprises there either, so. Yep. All yeah. right, Mike. Well, good luck. We're rooting for you. Thank can't you. can't wait to see you with your Mon Mothma poster. I don't know where you're going to hang it, but it's going to be great. I think I think I'm gonna hang it in in your house. I no, think, I think you're not gonna hang happen. it in my house. Nope. <laughs> Unless it's backwards. Like maybe we could flip it around. That might <laughs> that'd be cool. The backs of the cards are nice. Perfect. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Have a great time. Make sure you uh, continue to keep us all up to date. We are on the edge of our seats, cheering for you wildly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. All right, man. Have a great one. Right. Thanks for having me on. Okay. All right. Later. All right, so thanks to Mike for joining us, and we'll see you next week. You can find us on iTunes. You can drop us a five-star review if you really like the show. Uh, you can find me on Patreon, Tiny Grimes, uh, on YouTube as Tiny Grimes, uh, and you can always find uh, Mike on swdestiny.com, on Discord channels as Rebel Spy. Uh, and if you're interested, uh, Patreon Tiny Grimes has its own Discord channel now where we're just talking about some stuff. And uh, feel free to come on by there and uh, see you next time on the Smuggler's Den.